Back in 2013, I was living with my ex at the time, who lived near a nice country village. And as I was in between jobs at the time, I picked up a job at a local garden center. It was casual retail work, fairly decent pay, and easy going enough that I could take coffee breaks frequently and wear basically whatever I liked as long as I wore my work polo shirt. It was walking distance from my ex's house and full of people of all ages who were the most lovely people I ever met. Most of the regular customers who came to the garden center were usually sweet old people who would visit the cafe because we had free teas and discounted lunches for OAPs if they had a store card, so you often got to know all of them and some of them we gave nicknames. Most of them sweet-like, pink hair lady, a badass 80-year-old grandma who wore a tasseled leather jacket and bright pink hair. Then there was camper van couple, who used to drive a really cool camper van with bright orange flowers painted on it. You get the idea. With creepy artist man though, he gave most of the young girls weird vibes. He wore a straw hat, was in his late 40s, had round gold rimmed glasses, and would wear strange graphic shirts with naked women on them. Or, professional pussy patrol sort of slogans on the back. He always wore ripped jeans where his knees were always hanging out of them, which were always dirty with paint or mud or something. He had this weird half-smile that would never leave his face, and he had this leer that made people feel uncomfortable. He would take off his glasses and clean them constantly, which kind of made you feel like he was trying to get a better look at the girls who worked there, especially the younger ones, 16 plus school leavers usually. Anyway, it was a roasting hot summer's day, and I had gratefully accepted the job of watering the hanging baskets outside, where I could avoid the humid, sweaty heat of the greenhouses. I was wearing black shorts and my red polo, and my tool belt to prune and deadhead plants as I went. With the hose in my hand and Sonny's on my face, I was busy but enjoying the solitary job at the quietest part of the garden center. Well, hello there. Out of practically nowhere, he slipped out behind some wooden trellises and looked me up and down, smiling with his weird, too small teeth. His eyes lingered on me for what felt like an uncomfortable few seconds, and I turned off my hose and asked him if there's anything he needed. He shook his head and kind of shrugged, still smirking at my legs. Okay, sir. Have a nice day. Let me know if you need anything. I turned to continue. I've never seen you here before. You're a new one, he said. Huh? Me? Well, I've been here for eight months now. I must have missed the memo that a beauty like you started. You have a nice tan. You look young. Uh, thanks. I'm 23. Anyways, I have to get back to work, I said. Nice to meet you, Jessica. I suddenly remembered my name badge. I get slightly irritated that he now knew my full name. I make a beeline for the smoking area where the tool shed was, with an excuse to grab some smaller gardening gloves. And by the time I returned to the floor, he had left. As the weeks went by, he would come into the store regularly, usually mid-afternoon, coincidentally around the time I started my shift. Most of the time I was the only cashier, so I would have to serve him. He would buy the most smallest, pointless things, like floristry wire or a tiny bag of birdseed. It seemed like he would purposely make a purchase with the intention of interacting with me. He would make comments about my appearance, statements like, you have your hair different today. Yesterday you had it down. You have new glasses. That's a different lip color to yesterday. He would always announce my name loudly and deliberately during every interaction. I felt uncomfortable, but I was 23 and just politely shrugged it off. Around Christmas time, I was decorating the artificial trees, and he cornered me in the forest of them in the back of the store. He jumped out from behind one of them and made me jump. To which I was kind of pissed about him doing that because I dropped the glass ornament and it smashed. He bent down also and tried to help, grabbing my wrist and telling me not to touch the glass. His grip was scarily tight and forceful and his hands were clammy and gross. I slipped my hand out of his grip and asked him if I could help him with anything. 
That's when it got weird. He pulled a leaflet out from his back pocket and told me he was an artist. He had a Christmas art show happening in the local church hall and he wanted me to go with him. He told me that he was a painter and he thought I would like his work. I asked him if he wanted me to pin the leaflet to the local event board and he reached out and touched my arm and said, No, the invitation is specifically for you. He pointed his finger and jabbed it into my chest and said, You. So I'm standing there in a dark corner obscured from view by artificial Christmas trees, just kind of cornered by this guy who was touching me. I cringed away and said, I'm busy with my boyfriend that day, sorry, and I kind of scampered off. I remember feeling really strange after that, the fact he grabbed my wrist and jabbed his finger into my chest that way. I told a few of my colleagues about it, and they all told me they would warn me the next time he was in the store, so I could maybe hang out in the storeroom until he was gone. Well, that memo must have missed a few temp Christmas stuff, because one day I get told by one, your friend is asking for you at the tills. It wasn't unusual for my friends to stop by, as it was fairly popular for gifts and that kind of thing, so thinking it was maybe my ex's mom or something, I head to the till, and there he is. He's holding a piece of paper. I cringe, but he had seen me now, so I walked over and asked what he needed of me. He passed the paper over and asked me to open it. Folded up was a drawing of me, with an exaggerated chest and cartoon-like eyes, watering the hanging baskets in a sexual kind of position. I kind of stood there and said thank you, but I couldn't keep it as I thought it was inappropriate to take gifts from customers. I handed it back to him and he kind of looked at me with this angry stare. He turned around and walked out without another word. By this point, I had had enough. I knocked on my manager's door and told him about the whole scenario that just happened and all the previous interactions I'd had with him over the past year. He watched the CCTV and agreed that it was so strange the way he gave me this gross picture and he told me he would talk to him if he ever came back. He praised me for my reaction to his advances and said I was doing the right thing and he said he would try and see him off the next time. The next day was a Sunday and I was not due into work. My boss calls me and tells me he just received a call from HQ stating that an anonymous caller had called in to report a staff member inappropriately coming on to a customer. The staff member they had described and named was me. The caller had said that I, had been inappropriate towards him at work, offered to have sex with him, had led him on, and obviously promiscuous, and that I had been pursuing him for over a year. The jerk even described a fictitious relationship we'd had, and ranted loudly about how I'd been cheating on my boyfriend before hanging up. HQ luckily didn't believe a word, as my manager had already mentioned the guy to one of the higher-ups but they thought it was wise to let me know about this crazy guy and suggest I report it to the police. The next day, I did just that. The officer I spoke to said that he matched the description of the man who was a local pest, somebody who often harasses young girls in the local area. He was also known to stalk girls in his car and had attempted to abduct a young girl four years ago. The police officers assured me that they would file a report and talk to him officially and that he was not allowed in the garden center or anywhere near me again and if he did, I was to call the police and he would be arrested. Unfortunately though, it never stopped him sending a ranting letter to my workplace addressed to me saying he would kill himself if I didn't take him back and receive his gift he drew of me. Fortunately, the police saw this as unsolicited contact, and he was thankfully arrested. Years ago, on a beautiful early September afternoon, my brother and a couple of his friends, and me and a couple of mine, went to a local county fair. While there, we met a group of four guys in merged groups. We were having so much fun that we decided to keep the party going after we left the fair. Everyone followed me to my apartment, where we called another friend whose family owned the local single-story motel 
She hooked us up with a room at the end, far away from the other guests, and we were off to the races. It was a fun night. Lots of laughing, conversation, drinking, all that. I really enjoyed chatting with one of the new guys, but there was another one who I didn't like. He was very competitive with the other guys, bragging himself up and constantly making fun of them. He didn't add anything interesting to conversations. He wasn't very bright and had a locker room style humor that I've never enjoyed. No biggie, not everybody clicks. I probably didn't say more than a couple of words to him that night. The party eventually ended, and everyone went their separate ways. A couple of weeks later, I'm home on a Saturday night, when the doorbell rings. I open it up, and it was that annoying guy. He told me that he's cruising town with a friend, asked if I'd like to join them. I was honestly pretty bored, so I agreed to go, and then we headed downstairs. The car was the type with two bucket seats in the front, that dip between them with an emergency brake in it, and a bench seat in the back. When the annoying guy told me to slide over in the front to sit between him and the driver, I laughed and said, that wouldn't be comfortable at all, and I climbed into the back. We started rolling and I noticed that the driver was not one of the three guys we met at the fair. I felt a bit disappointed, but sucked it up. After all, the annoying guys of the friends were amazing, and this guy might be too. I threw out a conversation starter. Crickets from the driver, and more urging from the annoying guy to crawl into the front seat. I try another topic. Same response, and now I'm picking up tense vibes from the driver. I don't know what the annoying guy had intended, but alarm bells were going off and I wanted out. I coolly tapped the driver on the shoulder, said I decided to go home and turn in early, and he promptly turned around and headed back to my place. In the five minutes I was in his car, he hadn't said one word to me, but I swear, I felt him relax immediately when I ended the evening. Once home, I got out of the car as fast as I could and said bye and then proceeded up the walk. I heard the car back up and drive away with relief, but when I got to the door of my building, something made me turn around. That annoying guy was right behind me. I was pissed. You'd better run if you want to catch your ride, I said. It's too late. I'll never catch him. Guess you're walking home in the dark then, I replied. Okay, but I need to use your bathroom first. So folks, I ended up saying okay for a lot of predictable reasons. I was young, didn't have much of a backbone, and had been raised like most girls, to be polite. It was obvious he was creeping on me, he might have actually had dark intentions. I was furious with him, and I still said okay. Everything turned out alright, but I still hate that that's what happened. Please learn from my mistakes. Fuck politeness. I let us into the apartment and stay by the door while he uses the bathroom. He comes out and sits on the far right end of the couch. He kind of slides back, cups his hand behind his neck, and puts his fucking feet on my coffee table. Then, wearing an I win grin, he tells me he's not going anywhere. I stand there numbly for a bit, flipping through my options. At this point, I'm standing in front of a narrow piece of wall between the door on my right and the end of the sofa on my left, both within touching distance. The outrage and fury overtake me, and I know what I'm gonna do. I surprise him by grabbing a shirt front with both hands, pulling him up and to the right, then shoving him against the narrow wall space. I place my left forearm across his chest, pin him with all my weight, all while opening the door with my right hand. I hold the door with my right foot, grab his shirt front again, and push him into the hall. All this happened lightning quick. As the door was closing in his face, he said, But I'll have to walk all the way across town. I yelled through the door, You should have thought about that before you got out of the damn car. I never saw him again, but a few weeks later there was a knock at my door. I answered. It was a local man with cerebral palsy flanked by two of his buddies. 
He told me he wanted to take me out for a really nice dinner and to buy me a bottle of champagne. The champagne comment was so random and specific that it kept spinning in the back of my head. I told him no, that I do not date strangers, and I thought it was bizarre he was doing this. As they turned to go, the pieces fell into place, and I said, wait a minute, were you told to come here by a short, red-headed guy? He confirmed that that was the case, and all these years later, I believe the guy was told by the other guy that I was a prostitute, and that bottle of champagne was my code phrase for customers. Such a nasty little creep. This story took place about four years ago. I was 16 and 5 foot 6. I either looked like a 12 year old boy or a 16 year old tomboy, depending on the person. At the time as well, I suffered with really bad anxiety. You could definitely see it on my body language. I was definitely visually an easy target for predators. So, I was a 16 year old kid just picking up hardbacks from my last year in school. After I was done shopping, I decided to get a tram back to my dad's workplace, and then he would take me home from there. It was a Sunday morning, pretty chilly, and it definitely had an uneasy feeling. I hated going into town alone, but no one else was available to join me, so I sucked it up and did the deed. The trams were new at the time, and I'd only taken them two or three times, so I was definitely hypervigilant on them, especially since I suffer with anxiety hypervigilant so I didn't miss my stop, and hypervigilant that nothing weird happens, as the tram was notorious for weird people. I walk to my tram stop and I wait. I see the next tram is soon, but there is a guy making me unbelievably uneasy. I hate assuming the worst of people, but this man was making me so uncomfortable. Nothing in particular was off about him. He looked a bit scruffy, but not a predator so I decided to walk away from the stop for a bit and wait for the tram coming to pass, then return, and then get on the one after. They come often enough, and this guy was giving me the creeps. I walk away for a bit, take a nice relaxing stroll to calm myself down, and return to the stop. He's still there. When I left, he definitely watched me leave and waited for me to return. Now at the time I was doubting myself, I was telling myself I was being irrational. Something like a creepy guy following me couldn't surely happen to me. I was wrong. We get on the tram. My tram takes me about five stops to my dad's workplace. I walk down the tram a bit. The man was still in my eye line and I was in his. Now my dad's workplace is about a five minute stroll from my stop. But it is a walk down a quiet area. An area that someone could easily assault you. Or even take you and not many would notice, especially on a Sunday morning. At each stop, I'm praying this guy gets off the tram, but he doesn't. My anxiety has hit the roof. Although the tram walk is only five minutes, I call my dad to pick me up right outside the station. My dad surprisingly obliges. I think he could tell something was off with me. So all I had to do was walk out of the tram station and make it to the car. I still had hope in my heart that this guy would not get off at my station and go to the next one instead. It comes to my stop. I get off. And of course the creep gets off too. No one else gets off. It's just us two. Fuck. The guy looks at me and I look at him. We make eye contact. I could tell he was planning on walking in my direction and follow me out. I can see him panic a bit and then he walks in the opposite direction of me. Now the chilling part about this is, the station has only one exit. This man turns around and walks onto the tracks of the tram and just wanders off. I didn't stay too long to see if he would come back, and I sped walk to my dad's car. When I get into my dad's car, I double check with him that there's only one exit to the station, as the tram is only new and I was unfamiliar with it. He says yes, there is only one exit, and just then, I get covered in goosebumps. This man waited for me to get onto the tram, 
even though he could have taken an earlier one. He followed me to the station and decided last minute to abort mission. I have tried to rationally explain this to myself. Maybe he wasn't following me and he was just a weird guy. But why did his presence make me feel so uneasy that I decided to walk away and wait for the next tram? Why did he wait for the next tram when he could have gotten an earlier one? What are the chances of the man getting off at the same stop as me? Why did he not use the exit and walk onto the tram's tracks instead? It's not like I gave him a death stare. We just made eye contact when we got off the tram. I was a 5 foot 6, 16 year old kid, definitely not intimidating. All I know about this experience is that I was glad my dad picked me up outside the station. I never want to experience the feeling of being followed again. I was in high school, a freshman or sophomore, so about 14 to 15 years old, but I still looked much younger. I rode the city bus to school because no school buses routed to my neighborhood. My mom could have dropped me off at the time, but she started work at 8 and my school started at 9, so I really wasn't interested at being at school at around 7.15. That morning, I get on the bus as usual. It's not empty, but not full. I was part of the J. Rotsi in high school, and that was uniform day, so I'm wearing my uniform. If you've ever seen female military uniforms, you know that they're the least flattering thing in the world. I include this description in case there's any chuckle fucks out there who think that what you're wearing when you get creeped on make a difference. So I'm sitting in my seat, surrounded by my big-ass backpack and a guitar case from a music class. Suddenly this guy just materializes in front of me. I look up and I see this guy. Average height, sandy-colored, thin hair, and drug skinny with a tweaker face. He could be anywhere from 20 to 40. He stands awkwardly in front of me, and then thrusts his arm out and holds a folded piece of paper in front of me. He gestures for me to take it. It's so early in the morning and I'm so confused that I take it and he walks away. I open it and read it. It read, Hey, my name is Chris. I've been watching you for a while now, but I'm switching houses soon, so here's my phone number. Call me. He had written his number down. I can barely process what I've just read, and I can just feel his eyes on me. I arrange my stuff in the back seat around me like a barrier, and when my stop comes, I fly off the bus. I ran to the Rotsi building, where I would usually hang out before school. I burst into the building and basically tackled one of the Rotsi instructors and clung to him, shaking like a leaf and crying, holding the note and talking incoherently. Now our instructor was obviously retired military. He took the note from me, read it, and got the most steely-eyed look. He sat me down in a chair and walked over to the school phone on the table. He calmly dialed the number, and that dumb, creepy fuck answered. My instructor asked if his name was Chris. The guy said yes, and he quickly told him that he was my father, and asked, Why in the fuck did you... A grown man. Give my 14-year-old child your phone number. The creep didn't have anything to say other than ah and well. My instructor released a stream of very experienced, ex-military based threats until he could hear the guy just about shit his pants. He finally told him to never contact me again and hung up, and he gave me a huge smile and a hug. I was smiling through my tears at that point, having listened to his tirade. I called my mom, told her what happened, and she came down to the school and we went and filed a police report. I told her I was never getting on a city bus again, and I didn't care if I had to be at school two hours early. I wanted her to drop me off until I could drive, so that's what happened. The instructor was always my favorite teacher, and I still go visit him, even after graduating college. I imagine someday, at my wedding, He'll tell this story. I was 18 at the time. I lived in a suburb of a large city and attended that city's university. 
I did not yet have a vehicle, and public transportation in my city is pretty shit. Only buses, but they didn't go out to my neighborhood, so I had to take the charter bus to the city. I then had to get about three more buses to get to the university. During this time, I'd gotten quite used to being catcalled and stared at sometimes even followed for short distances. I always carried pepper spray, and since it was always broad daylight, I was never too concerned. But one day, I missed my first bus, meaning in order to catch the next one if I wanted to get to class on time, I'd have to walk five blocks down one street, then turn right for three more blocks. About halfway through my trek, I noticed a very large, unkempt man following me. He seemed very unstable. As I finally approached my stop, I grew cold, realizing that the man was also stopped waiting for the bus. I started to feel that detached, autopilot feeling. I just need to get to school, then I'll be fine, I remember thinking. Just then, another man riding a bike rode past us, looped around, stopped, and waited beside me. When the bus got there, I got on the bus, then the big man. The man on the bike put his bike on the front of the bus, and he got on and sat in the seat beside me. He did not say one word to me. After a couple of stops, the man got off rather abruptly, quite quickly, and when he did, the man on the bike also got off and rode back the way we came. I was very scared, but I think the man on the bike was looking out for me that day. I wish I could thank him for being there for me. A scared girl just a few months out of high school, and a total stranger. Thank you to the man on the bike. I hope you're doing well. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Do me a favor and hit the like button and comment. Let me know what you thought of the video. Don't forget to subscribe as well, and hit the bell icon as well so you can stay notified whenever I release a new video. Now if you fancy checking out my channel memberships or Patreon, or any of my social media, all my links can be found in the description below. And as usual, I want to thank my patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. So a huge thanks to Linda, Austin, Tegan, Chris and Donna, Cassie Fowler, Pretty Girl 215 Christy, B. Nick, Lil Smart, Do It, K, Something Edgy, Pretty Girl 215, Borderline Betty, Sarah C, Blazed Goddess, Christopher, Spider's Web, Ooh La La Andrea, Lady Drackard, Sue, Absinthe Alice, Rochelle, Astara Ray, Monique, Crafty Kel, Monica Level Ace, Emma, Sean Gorman, Jennifer L, Skittles MM, Gabrielle, Serafina Nightingale, Jennifer C, Misanthropia, Fluby, Ryan, Brenda, Rudy, Christina De La Rosa, Noosh, Lulu Rogers, Fire 05, Linda, Sham, Jody, Sarah P, Kathleen Fenton, James Gargano, Gemma Allen, Alex, and Courtney Maxwell. I hope you guys enjoyed that and are doing well.